Stacy Stevens. Welcome to my tiny home. We are in Springdale, Washington and on 16 acres of forested property. So I've never owned anything before. Like I've always been a renter. I've always been super into the outdoors. Um, I'm a certified kayaking and mountaineering guide. I spent a month up in Alaska getting certified. Like I, I just love being outside. So the idea of having a home that's like four bedrooms and two baths and cleaning it all and having, you know, just filling it with stuff, it's just not really my speed. Also, when I moved to Norway, I went there with five suitcases. Like I'm someone who can really pare down everything that I need and be able to like pack up and go and be nimble. It's not necessary for me to have a ton of stuff. So the tiny home living is, is great for me. And then also my ideal situation in, in the future is to have tiny homes or you know Airbnbs in multiple locations, whether it's all in the US or in different countries as well. That way, you know, you can just throw the dogs and me in a car and start driving and end up somewhere else and, and write it all off. <laughs> I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin originally. I've traveled around the country quite a bit with ESPN. I work for Abercrombie & Fitch now. I was previously with Nike. I still do a little bit of ESPN on the side. And I also run my own business. It's called CampervanAppraisals.com. As I was building out the camper vans, I got into being able to evaluate the value of each of those DIY vans, which is pretty difficult for an appraiser or for banks to understand the value of what those are. So. Having the knowledge of building my own and understanding all the components that go into them, it was just a really good, easy transition for me to become a certified auto appraiser and that's what I do on the side. This tiny home was built by Wind River. They're based out of Tennessee. It is 10 by 30 and 14 feet tall. I put in a lot of windows and one of the add-ons that I put in was the double doors, the French doors that open up and it provides a lot of open space. Basically doubles the amount of living space in the summer when it's nice out. Uh, we have a 10 foot by 30 foot deck as well. So it just provides a lot of that extra space. I live here with my two dogs. One is Kono, she was found on Kona Beach. She's a rescue. And then I have a COVID dog, another rescue. His name is Abner. <laughs> He's like, don't do that again, mom. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> I purchased this property January 10th and came here to start developing April 3rd. So between April 3rd and now, it's about six months that I've been developing all this property. The tiny home came in in about August, the end of August, I have a gym, I have a sauna, I have a hot tub, and all this will be available for rent. Right now, I am living in the tiny home as I continue to develop it. It is a work in progress as of right now. So starting tomorrow, we're going to start doing some fuel reduction here on the property. That means taking down some of the smaller trees, creating a big path around the property. So I'll be able to take my tractor and groom all of the trails that we have on the property and cross country ski. In the winter, I really plan on taking advantage of all the snow that will be up here. I'm from Wisconsin, I love the snow. If it's 80 degrees, I start dying, it's not for me. So I'm looking forward to grooming those trails, doing some cross country skiing, some snow showing up here on the property. The north end butts up to 500 acres of state land. So lots of opportunity to go out and play up there as well. So this will not be available for rent in the winter. Sorry, that's just for me. Why don't I show you guys around, come on. All right, so I wanna show you my gym. It's a pre-built shed that I had dropped off. It's a 14 by 24, so it's even bigger than the tiny home. Hashtag priorities. So inside, it, um, I did all the insulation, the walls, the painting, and we'd love to show it to you. Come on. So when I think of a place that I wanna go on vacation, it always has a gym. That's super important to me. It's one of the things that I value, so that's definitely something I wanted to put on this property. Now, it's not the same as going to a CrossFit gym where you have the community, but you still have everything that you need. So, we have a Concept 2 rower, brand new. Also a brand new assault bike. And I have a lifting rack with all the weights that you're gonna need. One cool thing I have on the property is a hot tub, but after a long workout in the gym, what's really nice is a sauna. Let's go take a look. So just adjacent to the tiny home, I have the sauna. It's a six person barrel sauna, electric heated. It'll heat up in about 45 minutes and it's ready to go. You put a little water on the heater and it just, it's glorious. So my property is partially off grid. I do have power with the power utilities coming up off the road, but then back here, 
I have two 625 gallon water tanks that I drive into town with my truck. It has a 150 gallon tank on that. So it's about a 20 minute drive into town and then 20 minutes back. That's how I get my water. So we do a little bit of conserving around here. Once the tank is filled in the truck, I back the truck up here and I put in a, a sump pump that then puts all the water into the tank. So once this one gets buried, I'm going to have that filled with 600 gallons of water and that goes directly into the house. In the future, I will be developing the north end of the property. So right now, this is just the first third of the property. The north end, I plan on putting a well and a septic drain field. Why don't we go inside the house now? Welcome. So one of the major important things to me about this tiny home when we were designing it is I just wanted it full of windows. Being a smaller space, you want to have that light coming in, a lot of natural light. And then this being south facing, I also wanted to make sure that I had some window shades. And it's great because these are on a, on a button. Let me show you real quick. So in the summer, this definitely helps reduce the amount of energy that you're using with these window shades that come down. Overall, the tiny home is built so efficiently that my monthly electric expenses are only like $35 a month. It's ridiculous, so super happy with that. Although it did go up a little bit once I put the hot tub and the sauna in. This tiny home is 10 by 30, so 300 square feet on the floor. And then the master suite, it is 85 square feet in addition, and then another 65 square feet for the guest bedroom. To my right, I have a dining table. It is set up for four, but right now it's just for two. I also work from this space when it's chilly outside or if it's still dark in the mornings, because I do work East Coast hours, so it doesn't really get light out until about seven o'clock these days. So I closed on my first van in March of 2020, literally the Friday when everything shut down. I started building it out over COVID and moved into it for two months. And then I realized you could rent them out. So I called my friend that I was staying with. I was like, hey, do you think, you know, if I rent this out, I could stay on, you know, your floor for a couple of nights or whatever? And he's like, sure. So I posted it for rent and it booked out for a full month. I ended up staying on his floor for a couple of months until I found a new place to live. I moved into and then I bought a second van. So I started building that out, put that on the market. And I just eventually built out my fleet to five vans was renting those out of Portland, was doing really good, but it was a lot of work. I was doing 30 loads of laundry a week <laughs> and managing renters, like people who didn't even know what an emergency break was. It was a little challenging. And then I sold four of them and I took all that money and I put it into this property. So this tiny home is paid off and then I put a big chunk down on the property as well. So my expenses are very low and it, it's great. At the end of every year, I look over my finances of the year before and I start planning what I want to do the year upcoming. And as I move into that year, I also do a quarterly check-in with myself that I, like in Gmail, I send myself an email and I say, this is what's going on and this is what I, I'm hoping for you in the next quarter. And then I send it, like I, I schedule it to send for the next quarter. So I do that every quarter too. And if I'm not on track, that's okay. Like I don't really judge it, but I... I've been told that like my essence is playful freedom. And so I think I really do live that. Like I'm always looking for how can I structure my life and think about my life and do things that will support this ability to travel and ability to do really the non-traditional, but to see things and experience things and not really have stuff. I grew up pretty poor. So I think that that's also a driver. Like I remember being on food stamps and I remember there being some food insecurity growing up. And so I kind of actually squirrel food away, which is like, <laughs> I always have something like to snack on. But I think also that has created this drive of like, I don't want to be there again. And I also was like so, so, so poor in college, like had very little help. And so after, you know, I got my first job, it's funny because like my first job was ESPN and I was traveling for college football. And so it's like I, I was already starting to marry the income with the desire for travel and the desire for experiencing new things. And so, you know, like traveling and going out to eat, like we would go to the movies like once a year on New Year's Day. And like now I could go to the movies anytime I wanted. So being able to see that hard work really does pay off was just such a motivator for me. 
And here we have the kitchen. Again, everything is really energy efficient. I really appreciate that. And all of the doors are on soft close hinges. Really nice touch. One great feature of this kitchen is the open shelving. I really do like being able to see everything and grab everything easily. This big farmhouse kitchen sink is just, it's lovely because it has so much space inside. I have an energy efficient dishwasher here too. That was one of my major things that I wanted in this tiny home just because I'm actually a personal chef and I am a nutritionist as well. So I do a lot of cooking and coming from a camper van to a tiny home that has this much space in a kitchen, I'm just ecstatic. There's tons of counter space, plenty enough for me. One major feature I also got was my espresso machine. Like that was my first hooray purchase once I got the tiny home. The van didn't have enough power to power that, so super pumped. So here we have the propane powered oven and cooktop. I really love cooking with gas. I also put that in my van, my camper vans, all of them have that as well. So this is powered by propane as well as the water heater. So those are the only two things that don't run on electric in this house. And then over here I have a fridge and freezer, but I really enjoy having an ice maker because I like drinking water, but it can't be room temperature. So I definitely have this going all day, every day. Inside the fridge, I'm a food prepper. <laughs> so I have a ton of food. Um, I also have an additional freezer in the gym if you notice that. So that extra freezer in the gym and then having this packed really gives me some security because I know that winter's coming, I have a pretty steep driveway and it might be difficult to go to town, you know, and so just having that security of all that extra food and, and I do all the food prep too. So I you know portion everything out and it's frozen in individual little packets. Just makes it really easy when it comes time to make a meal between work calls. Underneath the stairs going up to the master bedroom, there's this enormous pantry and I love it because all my spices are here. But then inside they were very smart to put in a plug. So this is always plugged in the toaster and the microwave and it just lives inside of here um, nonstop. So, if I do want to get to anything else, I just kind of move things around and pull it out, but it's super handy to have this extra storage underneath the stairs. Continuing on with the storage underneath the stairs, this is really where I keep the dog stuff, the food, the toys, the treats and things like that. These storage boxes, we'll pull this one out. You can tell that it doesn't take up the whole space of the stairs. So I still have extra storage behind these boxes, but these just make it look nice. Why don't we go on upstairs and I'll show you the bedroom. All right, so I'm on the landing coming into the master bedroom and right behind me, there's a whole shelving unit that I opted in for with this build. So in here, there's a closet that has a substantial amount of room for um, mostly shirts. It's a little too short for things like dresses or things like that. So I have another option for that we can talk about. Another great feature of this landing is that when you're picking out your clothes, you can get dressed right here. I'm 5'7 with shoes on right now. So I think there's about six feet of room right here. So it provides a lot of space, even though it's a smaller space up here, you can still get ready in the morning. And then in here, if you crawl in, there's additional shelving that's over here. So that's where most of my pants and my sweaters go. And then underneath there, there's also this big cubby where I can put extra blankets and things like that to stay warm at night. Another great feature about this house being so wide and so long is that I was able to get both the kitchen table and the couch in here. Also, this extra storage unit, which allows me to hang those longer things like the dresses and the jackets that aren't able to fit in these other storage units. Speaking of which, under here, in this staircase that goes up to the guest bedroom, there's extra storage in here. Right now, it's got like a couple of things inside, but what I'm going to do with it is put a TV on a roller cart so that you can have a television here as well. But I didn't want to put it up on the walls because that's really, like with the light coming in, it would make it a little difficult to watch the screen. And also here on my couch, this is pretty standard every day. We've got Abner right here. He's about 10 years old, and again, he's a rescue pup, a COVID doggy. And then this one's Kona. I've had her since she was eight weeks old, and she was found on Kona Beach. So behind me, we have the bathroom. And one of my favorite features of this bathroom is the mirror that I had them 
wire for me. So as soon as this came in, I installed this myself. One thing I like about this is that it heats up so when you're showering, it doesn't get off foggy. And there is a lot of counter space in here. This bathroom just is, it's huge. I'm, I'm just so happy with it. A full size uh, shower. And then underneath in here, there's more storage as well. So I've basically put in like a little dresser. So it has like, you know, my sports bras and my shorts and things like that. And then just to the left of that, we have a washer dryer combo. And it works a lot better than I expected, but I don't always dry all of my things. So mostly I just dry towels and bedding. So the rest of the things get hung up on here which I added as well. So it's really nice that it just compacts easily away so you can only have it out when you really need it. And it dries really quick in here too. And the reason that we can fit all this stuff inside the bathroom is because of the wraparound stairs that go up to the guest bedroom. So it just provides a lot of space, just like in the kitchen where we have the big pantry, here we get the washer dryer, a large drawer for you know towels and things like that, and then extra storage here as well. And then this way we have the guest bedroom. So similar to the master bedroom side, there's another landing on this side, so it's easy to change clothes and things like that. Um, I did put an extra step here so that it's easy for smaller kids or people who might have a little more trouble getting up this big jump. And then in here we have a queen size bed with a little bit of space on either side. And I really actually like the view from this one because on the master bedroom side, I have the pillows facing the other way, which is nice to keep light out. But from this perspective, you get to see a bunch of really nice views and you can see the sauna. This also is a really nice side to stay on. So Wind River in Tennessee built the tiny home and they did such an incredible job. And I have to say from like start to finish, like not only just Wind River, but also One Call Logistics, who was the company who delivered it. I just had a positive experience from beginning to end. The design process was really cool. They sit you down with a designer, her name was Dee, and she walked me through like all the different options and all the different costs of each of everything. I was even able to like to change my mind a couple of times too. Like I wasn't quite set, you know, slept on it a few days. And I was like, oh, I kind of want to do this instead. Yeah, it was just super easy to work with them. Super happy with the product and the experience. I think all in all with delivery, I came to like 151 for this tiny home and I paid for everything in cash. I was thinking about financing two but at the end of the day, it made more sense for me to buy one out in cash. Spring, summer, and fall, this will be rented out or available for rent. When it is rented, I'll be in the van, so I'll have the options to travel. If that goes well, then I plan on developing the east side of the property where the camper van currently is, and then I'll put in another tiny home, another deck, long-term solution. I will develop the north end of the property, so this is only the lower third of the property. So the northern end, I will clear out enough for a home and a big barn and a greenhouse and then um, put in a well on the septic. So this is a 2020 Ford Transit high roof extended van that I built out. And when the tiny home is rented, I'll be staying in here. So it might mean that I'm staying here on the property. I might be going surfing. I might be going who knows, but I built out five of these over COVID, rented them out of Portland, Oregon, and then I sold four of them last year, and that's how I was able to fund everything that's going on here. Some of the cool features about this van, um, this was a four-seater that I built out, so for rentals, for people who had small kids, this was a really good option. And then when I'm in here, I work remote, so I use this as my little stationary desk, and I have a monitor that's constantly here, and I can put two more monitors here. So I have my full workstation. So this van has a Webasto Airtop Evo 40. It's a gas heater and it pulls the gas straight from the gas tank to heat the van. And it's way more heat than this space needs and it also adjusts automatically for altitude. There's a refrigerator in here as well. This is a 12 volt. I originally had a 110 and swapped it out. So that's been good. It's also shorter, which means I get to put all of my spices in here. In the floor, I put in a drain, so I have a collapsible laundry basket in the back that has a drain in it as well, and it sits right in there. And then we pull this out and use this as the shower head, and then there are also little hooks here for a shower curtain to keep everything dry and keep all the wetness right in this area. Also, there's a toilet in here. It's a nature's head composting toilet that just rolls straight out. 
And then if you have two people working in here, one could be sitting here with this desk and one could be sitting over there, or if you're eating that way or whatever. So plenty of options for multiple people staying in here. This bed is a queen width, but it's a little bit shorter than a queen, just inherently, you know, with the sides of the van, there's only so much space. But I gotta say, coming from living in a camper van to the tiny home feels like a mansion. This van also has three 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries in the back and then 600 watts of solar on top. It also has a DC to DC charger. So when you're driving, it also charges the batteries. So there's never any concerns about being able to have enough power to live in it. The property was 107.5 and I put 20% down to begin with. It is financed at 8% at seller financing. So it's a little bit high. So I'm definitely chipping that off. Like every month I'm adding extra that I can from my day job. That will be the first thing that I pay off. It should be done in the next year and three or four months. I had my criteria of land that I wanted and I'm worried about the future of this country in water. So we definitely wanted to be somewhere where there was snow, there was snowpack and there were aquifers. So Springdale sounded like a nice place. And I wanted to be within 45 minutes of cross country skiing and I wanted to have trees. It is designated forest property, so the property taxes are very, very low. There are some stipulations with that. You have to make sure that you are clearing fire risk and you have to check in with the county with your report and everything that you're working on. That's totally worth the low property taxes. For Stevens County in Washington, you are allowed to have two park model RVs and also one structure, one like home structure. Of course, you want to make sure that you have those permitted, that you have gone through the county, that they have signed off on it. So I did all of that before I even placed the offer on the property because I wanted to make sure that the things that I was going to invest in were going to pay off in the end as opposed to me just like going out and doing it and then finding out that I was going to put myself in a hard spot. It's going to snow next week, so I'm looking forward to that. But like once we have a good base of snow, I plan on taking the tractor and grooming the trail that we put around the perimeter of the property. Maybe doing some trails in between so we can have some swishbacks for cross country skiing. And then going into spring, like I'll have my Airbnb listing up and I'm hoping that, you know, this will rent well in the spring and summer of next year. If that goes well, we'll start developing the east side. And we, I mean, me and some investors, I'll be looking for some investment influx there. I mean, if this continues to go well and I'm still enjoying it and the property across the street's still available, maybe I'll do that too. Maybe a wedding venue, who knows? watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.